before that, I would like to share a brief word about him. Uh, he has a product from DRTC, that is Documentation Research and Training Center of ISI Bangalore, and completed his PhD from Punjab University in Chandigarh. He served in many corporate and international organization. He was the founder manager of British Council Chandigarh and served the director of American Library in Kolkata before joining to the our Indian academia system. In his professional career, he has visited many countries in Europe, Asia, and different states of United States of America to receive several national and international award and recognition. And most importantly, he is the first university librarian of our university. And today, he will share your his thought and expertise on learning the e-learning, a guide to the e-learning approaches. So, sir. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear? Me? Yes, sir. Now, this is the word today. Can you hear me? Can you listen me? Am I audible? With this, I want to start my talk today. Uh, it was a mesmerizing talk by uh, Dr. K. S. Kupushami. What a delivered by him. Um, Sri Dev Prashad Roy Chaudhary, the president of governing body, Dr. Manojit Roy, principal of Barakpur Rashtra Guru Shurendranath College, Dr. Shutapa Ghosh. Bustidar, uh, coordinator of this program, and my brother, Dr. Joydeep um, Chandra, uh, the librarian of this uh, college. I am really happy to talk to this um, webinar today because this college is um, with us, that is with West Bengal State University. And the topic, it, it is really very good. Uh, E-learning experiences, <clears throat> apps and tools. Um, as the speaker of today's topic, I thought not only apps and tools, but the infrastructure to implement these uh, E-learning sessions or E-learning courses in India, uh, or especially in West Bengal, I would like to share. So uh, my topic will cover not only the, the tools and um, um, tools and techniques, but also uh, uh, the uh, other things that um, that is required for e-learning in Indian scenario. Now with this, I want to uh, I want to uh, talk to you regarding uh, regarding the topic today. <coughs> Let me uh, share my screen first, or one second, for a second. Yeah. So, Can you can you see this screen? Radeep? Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. okay. Now I would be talking about uh, learning, e-learning, a guide to e-learning approaches. That will be my topic. Actually, e-learning 
this is the new uh, new concept i should say though we used to talk about e learning uh, e resources in our uh, field that is in library and information field for years together decades or it is decades now uh, about e learning e resources all these um, terms we used to know or used to talk about uh, for several years but due to this covid 19 the practical thing practical approach has come to us now is a big challenge uh, about e learning how to get in touch with our students as a professor uh, kupusami was talking uh, to to reach out to the last students even with these resources that is the big challenge and we the professionals we have to help our uh, faculty members uh, professors teachers to um, to use these resources very carefully or very efficiently for the students so that they can reach to them with their lesson plan or assignments or whatever or engage the students in different um, uh, activities so what is e learning e learning is um, uh, e learning is uh, something where we teach the students or make the students learn through e resources so it is uh, it is mandatory that we should have uh, 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 students and the resources to teach e learning to them uh, in e learning cases this makes easy for the users to learn anything and everything from anywhere wherever he is sitting or for which part of the world is there he can he can learn lessons or whatever is um, taught to them although e learning is based of formalized learning system it is provided through electronic devices such as computers tablets and even cellular phones that are connected to the internet that we all know now that um, what are all the requirements we need to have um for teaching or uh, providing e learning to our students because this is this has come uh, to us all of a sudden we never thought of e learning or e resources we always used to feel that the students and teachers will be face to face they will be talking face to face and they will not be when a far uh, away and will be will be taking classes or lessons from the teachers or from the instructors for example now i am talking to them uh, if i was able to talk to them face to face it would have been much more interactive than what i will be talking to them without seeing your face or without seeing where you are now so that way this start this thing this e learning has come to us all of a sudden and um, this um, covid 19 made us rather forced us to uh, to go for e learning in our country like all other countries all over the world but countries like china or united states of america or britain all these countries um, they have uh, all together the different stories to tell because they have already infrastructure for example china i should say almost 99% um, uh, they are they were ready before before the pandemic so they they did not have to face the problems which we are facing in a country where more than um 138 crore population is there and um, a large number of them are about 66% of them are in, in villages and a large number of them are young population in india so there uh, the, we had the we had to face uh, the problem uh, uh, we had to face the problem and um, um uh, and uh, we have to prepare ourselves now why e learning first question is why 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 we have to uh, think about e learning first of all as i said that we started thinking about e learning majorly due to the covid 19 but only due to the covid 19 is it that the case that e learning um, we started Uh, i should say yes majority uh, as i said already 80% should be due to covid 19 but in india also we started thinking um 
distance learning where students uh, were getting uh, the um, uh, teaching materials or reading materials or from the teachers to distance more there also we used to use e-learning sources now why e-learning because e-learning has the advantage of greater access it 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 removes the geographical um, geographical boundaries and the students sitting in his in any place of the world can get the better education or whatever the most standard education uh, of the world for example through e learning a student sitting in a remote of uh, remote place in india can get the teaching or learning from oxford university cambridge university or universities of repute of that kind it provides better results e learning is uh, in higher education has been known for improved productivity argument focus and thereby provided better academic results it really provides um, uh, the uh, productivity improves the productivity and argument the focus of uh, the the students and provide and as a result they provide better results it is seen that the students can boost their retention by about 25 to 60% through e learning it is a survey result not i am saying they can boost their retention by 25 to 60% when they get their learning through e sources e resources cost effectiveness we all will agree that when it is e learning both the institution as well as the students they both can save their cost institution save their cost by you know not providing the um, classroom facility or other related activities say for related things say for example electricity or you know uh, other uh, teaching uh, teaching aids to the students similarly students also do not have to pay the cost of um, say for example um, traditional methods uh, uh, they do not have to pay the uh, cost of trainers classrooms course materials travel and accommodation all this cost students can save when it is e learning so that's what e learning concept is also important quick lesson delivery as compared to traditional method of lesson delivery e learning is much more sophisticated dynamic and quick most e learning lessons are wrapped within a single academic session so it is quick e learning session e learning classes or mode of e learning process is um, much quicker than traditional learning system so they are also e learning is uh, better than uh, traditional learning system personalization next point is personalization when it is a traditional learning system what normally happens that we teach students in a group say for example uh, uh, you know standard group or uh, or a, a real group should be a group of 40 students but in university system in indian university system college system school system we normally see that a large number of students sometimes even 200 students are there in a class to take the le take lessons from the students or you know participate in class but when it is a e learning system it is personalized system system so a student can choose um whether he wants to sit with one of your classmates two of your classmates or whether he wants to take the lesson by him or herself only so there it is much better than um, um this traditional system in instant up scaling see today's world what it wants today's world it wants that we update ourselves regularly that is the call of the day so e learning enables everyone to upskill themselves at a time and place of their choice so when we are going uh, learning e learning we can we can update ourselves automatically by our own effort as professor um, kuposami was uh, telling in 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 his lecture 
that yeah, that it is not a big deal that we cannot learn e-learning or e-resources. Uh, it is possible if we if we try if we have inclination to learn e-resources, we can learn by ourselves and upscaling our um, uh, our uh, our um, boost our skills through e-learning resources. So that is another important thing. It is environment friendly. We all know that e-learning is very environment friendly. Why? For example, when you go to go for traditional learning, then we need to have the power, electricity, uh, you know, um, air conditioning in our classrooms, or if, if not air conditioning, at least uh, we need to have power electricity. So it is saying that if we go for e-learning mode, at least we can um, save 90% approximately 90% of uh, consumption of energy and 85% of carbon dioxide emission we can save when we are going for e-learning module or electronic learning module. Physical space, it is not almost not required because when it is a traditional mode, as I said already, that we have to have classes, we have to have a group of students, and the ideal group is 40. So if it is 40 also, we need to have a room. Uh, we need to have a good classroom and other infrastructural uh, things. But when it is e-resource, e-learning, we do not have to think all these things. So physical space is almost um, uh, not necessary for um, for e-resources, for e-learning. E then it comes free of stipulated time. What is free of stipulated time? When it is a class environment, that is when we go for traditional mode, then we have to have, we have to follow the time, that specific time we have to follow that, uh, say for example, the, if the class, the teacher is coming at one o'clock, we have to follow that time one o'clock and we have to go to the class as per the time of the teacher. So we have a stipulated time and that particular stipulated time only we have to attend the class. But when it is, e-learning, if it is not between a teacher and a student, uh, then there is a time, of course, um, uh, teachers, they normally, or the instructor, they normally allow, uh, allow the time, we need to follow. But when we, when we teach ourselves own, if it is own teaching, uh, then uh, e-learning, uh, it, is, it is not, we do not have to follow any stipulated timeline. Greater outcomes um, in e-learning, it is it is it is good that the outcome comes in very fast. That e-learning works wonders when it comes to measuring outcomes, tracing results, and gathering feedback. For example, um, uh, sometimes back I was um, listening, seeing the lecture presentation, wonderful presentation of um, Professor Kusami. He was mentioning about Mentimeter. So Mentimeter through Mentimeter, we can have, uh, we can see the, uh, we can get the feedback of the students. It is something like a um, feedback mechanism. So uh, the outcome we can see immediately uh, after the class or while the class is on. So in that case also, e-learning is also very good. Not only that, uh, while doing the classes, we have certain um, platforms, for example, Seesaw, we have a platform. Through this platform, we can inform, we can see the weak, weaker sides of the students, where they need improvement and uh, where they need to, need to have more concentration. And that message we can directly pass on to their parents also. So Seesaw is the platform, again I say, the, through that platform, uh, we can pass the message to their, to their parents. So in that case also, um, e-learning plays a major role while teaching the students. In, uh, not only that, even students' behavior, if we want to see the behavior of the students, how they are behaving, what they are doing, that is also uh, possible. Uh, and there is a platform called Class Dojo. Class Dojo uh, fortunately, 
all these you know platforms which i will be talking to you after the after uh, sometime maybe after one or two slides i had an opportunity to see personally uh, i had the opportunity to have practical experience of all these platforms so i can share with you that how these platforms how these um, e learning resources tools are useful for the uh, or beneficial for the students of, of college and university as i said um class dojo through this we can we can measure we can see the behavior of the students and accordingly we can we can uh, uh, plan our lesson or plan our um, uh, course of action for the for the particular group of students or a particular students so here uh, here are uh, these are of the importance or why we think about e resources e learning um for our students but once again i must say that um, uh, e learning was not that uh, that uh, important in our uh, in our indian indian scenario or rather i should say world scenario we are forced to go to e learning uh, due to the covid 19 but uh, you know for everything whatever we do there is a positive positivity here also e learning since we we have learned e learning we started e learning we have learned lot of things through e learning uh, and that will be really useful for indian education system or uh, it will be useful for the indian government or local government to know what are the structural uh, things infrastructure we need to develop for uh, e learning so that we can cater the students through e learning tools as and when it is required i wish or um, uh, that uh, this uh, pandemic never comes again in uh, in our um, in the world but that is with that no one knows what is waiting for next so we should be prepared for everything when it comes so this is the this is what we need to know e learning as i said data access better results cost effectiveness quick lesson delivery personalization instant of of schooling environment environment friendly physical space free of stipulated time great outcomes greater outcomes all these things that uh, that make us think about e learning but again i should say we started thinking about e learning and this covid 19 forced us to think about e learning in 2020 now the main question today's lecture how how we 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 do e learning in in especially in india what are the things that we need to consider for e learning not only apps not only apps i'll go one by one that what are the things that we we require for e learning in indian scenario so um so that um, we know um that these uh, these things are required and we need to be prepared well before e learning or um teaching e learning to our students so first of all what are the platform that we, we we use or we need to know to engage our students to engage our students engaging is important you know we want to teach our students we want to take their exams even through online or through e, e learning platform but to do that we need to engage the students first we need to create um you know eagerness or you know energy among the students so that they they feel happy to attend e learning courses or classes or uh, uh, whatever we teach to them so that this is important we need to have we need to create the that kind of enthusiasm among the students or our uh, learners before we think about e learning already one year is over our experiences that some students they got um 
good um, interest about e-learning, but some students they didn't. They could not even attend um, the classes, uh, and uh, they could not. Um, they could not um, uh, go uh, or attend class. Uh, they could not have the facility to go for e-classes. Now let us see what is what are the platforms that we should use in um, uh, we we need to use in e-learning e-learning case. First of all, Google Classroom. We all know this is a very common platform, and most of the conferences, video conferences, or uh, webinars all over the world or all over India, all over West Bengal that we are doing, that is we are using Google Plus, Google Plus, Plus Google, uh, Google Platform. What is Google Plus Platform? It is an easy use web app for seamlessly organizing the daily activities of the students. This tool allows you, allows the um, uh, instructor to take online classes, distribute course materials, assign assignments track students progress send feedback etc from anywhere and anytime so google classroom we all know that these are the things we can assign you know uh, uh, students um, uh, the assignments track their progress and distribute course materials everything we can do and we can have a large number of the students together to have this class but as um, the, the earlier speaker, uh, Professor um, Kupusami, was uh, talking about free resources. You know, um, so it is uh, true that sometimes uh, Google Classroom, up to a certain limit, you can have free institutional access. But after that limit, you have to pay a certain amount also. So it is not completely free. Then. Uh, there is another very important and very interesting uh, platform called Kahoot. Kahoot is a game-based learning app to improve students' engagement in the virtual classrooms. With more than 50% of US educators using this platform, it is possible to create quizzes, post live games, and more. So, you say, for example, you want to start a class with your students, so they will be coming okay today again we have a class oh, oh maybe there will not be power or something or the other they may have that kind of mentality but Kahoot is the one which will create an atmosphere where you can engage the students with um, something some um, uh, a game you can start the uh, your class with some game and as i said that 50 percent of uh, the uh, of the instructors of us they use this kahoot platform for their students to teach or take classes um for the students when i was there for a program even in, in this age also i was taught i was uh, you know i have seen kahoot how it is used and it's so interesting so every day uh, for a 15 days um um training program this kind of programs are really important and it um, helps boost the energy of the student then comes zoom you all know zoom platform this is uh, widely used all over india uh, there are some problem with zoom sometimes but now again zoom is um, working fine and uh, we can do video conferencing and can um, can um, give uh, different materials to the participants Actually, um, uh, this is a problem. Uh, it is uh, tutoring relations, communicating with multiple students, and so on. This kind of things we can do with Zoom. You can boost students' participation during remote learning with amazing features like one click content sharing, digital uh, whiteboard, etc. These are all the facilities digital whiteboard and all with having Zoom platform. Zoom is a very commonly known platform in, in India. Um, so, that is another platform that uh, that is heavily used also during this period of um, crisis in Indian scenario. Then comes CISO. As I was telling you, that uh, CISO offers a bulk of resources to to the students 
for building successful digital learning environment. It allows uh, the instructor to showcase the students' strengths, areas of improvements, students' learning progress, etc., to their parents from the virtual classroom. So we have gone that far that CISO is a platform uh, through which we can um, uh, we can take the weaknesses or the or the place of improvement that is required for the for the student and that can pass on to the parents of that particular student so CISO is very important platform for um, digital learning or e-learning photomath this is a award winning um, very important um, uh, platform for e resource here a large number of um, mathematicians they have put uh, their head together and they created this um, uh, this platform where they share the uh, different problems mathematical problems and also the solutions and it is heavily used all over the world and for the math students it is really a blessing for the time uh, of crisis then comes socrative socrative is um, is uh, one of the efficient e-learning web app to improve the engagement of the students as i said once and again that engagement is important even for the library uh, those were the librarians here library professionals for us also the new this term engagement has come very um, uh, you know force is a force now that we need to engage our students not only they should come to the libraries, but uh, engagement is important. Engagement is a new term for library science also, that we librarians should know how to engage our uh, students in our library activities. So Socrative is one of those um, um, platforms which engage students. It allows uh, the instructor to launch a mini quiz, a false, uh, it is a it, uh, it poll questions like uh, Mentimeter also you can have a poll questions some questions you can give and the students will uh, answer through their Android and mobile phone or whatever so that is possible assign quick assignment task etc it is a cloud based students response system to instantly examine the students understanding levels while uh, while remote learning so when you are uh teaching the students as uh, my earlier speaker said from face to face you can see their eyes and can understand what uh, what level of uh, um, uh, learning they are taking from your lecture or whether they are really in the class or mind is somewhere else but when it is e-learning you may not be even knowing whether the student is there in your class or just uh, he switched on and go away somewhere else this is one again one important platform uh, web app which is important to know the engagement of the students and you can give them some questions and can have the answer so by this way you can know whether the students is there in your class or not then comes add modo this is another um, very important um, platform is a perfect communicative foundation between the instructor and the students communication it is important um, create quick questions share digital assignments analyze students performance communicate with parents and much more so edmodo is something like um, CISO. Uh, we here uh, we can uh, give the um, uh, assignments to the students can see their performance and by seeing their performance we can even inform to the parents to so that they know how much or how their words are doing in the uh, e-learning environment then comes scratch scratch is um, uh, by allowing students to showcase their activities um, skills to outside world this is one of the most important uh, platform again i will tell you uh, when uh, it can uh, it can have a group activity event the students can show their uh, creative creativity to the world students can 
combine music, graphics, and photos to create interactive games, animations, slideshows. These activities make the, make them engage in learning as well as playing. As I said to you earlier, that engagement engagement and engagement this is this is the these are these are the this is the word buzzword now for us and um, we should engage our students so here is the one scratch which will help you um uh, help you make uh, uh, the innovate, uh, innovation or the students can make you know the, uh, make their innovative ideas create uh, their innovative uh, um, their innovative things and can share those innovative things with the world and this way you can engage the students so this is also um, important one of the important apps for the students all these apps you can go to google or and can type and can see how it works i wish i could show them uh, the live demo as professor um, uh, showed earlier but i will not have that much time to show you that demo because I want to talk some something more about the uh, about the infrastructure of where we are in India. We can talk all these uh, things about um, web and um, and uh, different platforms and um, other modes, but to implement these, we need to have certain we need to have certain other infrastructure where I'll be talking and we'll be seeing where we are now and how to improve this infrastructure thing that we need to think. So that's what maybe it may not be possible to show you live demo at least for one or two, but you can see all these um, um, typing these words on, um, on Google event. So that is a scratch. Crazy, I will tell you this, uh, this thing to note down crazy because most of us, we um, what we do, we um, give our presentation through PPT, even my presentation, if you if you see now, it is on PPT. But Prezi is one of the one of the most important um, uh, presentation power <coughs> uh, presentation thing. Um, as um, earlier speaker said that uh, we are promoting Microsoft. That is true. That um, um, uh, Excel or PowerPoint presentation or Word, whatever you say, all are Microsoft thing. But crazy, if you can check, uh, you will have a much better um, um, uh, result as compared to PPT. So it provides beautiful designs, templates for creating a visually stunning presentation. Using crazy presentation in the online classroom, you can grab the students' attention and keep them focused on the lesson. So everyone wants as um, uh, once um, to see something very uh, very interesting it is a, um, a dead presentation one likes right if you if you are shown some good pictures good um, um, creative things then you will be attracted to those kinds of um, presentation so crazy is one of those platforms or apps which you can use um, for giving your presentation then thinklink is an award winning education and app again it is possible to provide virtual learning experiences to the students by augmenting the images, videos, virtual tours, music, and more. So here, again, you can show them the music. Uh, students can see music, um, virtual tours, videos, etc. Et through this ThinkLink um, app. This is also one of the most important apps which I have seen in, or rather used in, in my practical life. Then Quizlet, uh, you know, you can guess the name itself. Quizlet, what is Quizlet? What is what it used to be? You can create good quizzes in this um, using this app or platform, and can attract the students' um, attraction, interest towards your lecture, and uh, you can combine your lecture with these quizzes, with this um, quiz. So Quizlet is another important um, thing uh, while taking class. Uh, you can use. It says with the support of which that free study sets, study modes, and the class games, you can instantly create a high interactive virtual class. The powerful e-learning web app offers several study modes that make virtual learning effective. 
So you need to make virtual learning not only effective, interesting. You know, no one wants to sit uh, in a virtual class if it is not interesting. So it has to be interesting. To make it interesting, you need to have the material for the class as well as the material for the students or the learners who can really, really enjoy that class. It could be a quiz, it could be a game or whatever. And in that case, Quizlet is one of the uh, important apps or platforms for for the uh, for the e-learning. Next comes Class Dujo. As I was telling you, that Class Dujo is the one the one which one used to um, observe the behavior of the students. Class Dujo is an amazing tool to track students' behavior. It is possible to allot regards based on the on the behavior of the students while attending the session and um, this keeps motivating the students to maintain a disciplined behavior at all times what it says it says that it can measure the behavior of the students so what we can do we can we can give them an award that if your behavior is very good while doing the class e class then you will be awarded with certain things so that can create an impression or an interest among the students and you you can have a quite disciplined class um, uh, while uh, while doing your e-learning for the students so all the students not necessarily will, uh, will be that disciplined say maybe you have given time nine o'clock to a student that i'll be taking class at nine o'clock he, will, he or she will tell you, his or her mother or father, whoever it is in the, you know, in the family, keep me or wake me up at 9 o'clock, wake me up at 9 o'clock, they will wake up at 9 o'clock, they will switch on the uh, mobile and, uh, you know, enter your class and then go back and sleep. That, that, that can happen. So, this class dojo is one of the most important apps which will encourage the students to be there at the class. And... Um, uh, and uh, actively participate uh, participate the class and once uh, they are participated actively in the class they will be rewarded so this way we can attract their attention um, uh, so attention span or engage them again i should use the word engage them in our activity then comes the story world with the support of the storyboard, you can create digitally interactive and artistic books in the virtual classroom. You can assign projects to students, give constant feedback and more. So they can create books even. Storyboard is, a, is, a, is, a, is an app which will help the students to create books. You can give them constant feedback. So that will help the students again to engage themselves with you and um, um, e-learning for them will be more interesting and uh, your class will be more successful when it is um, when we use these storyboard apps for taking our classes for, for the students. Then comes Animoto. What is Animoto? Animoto is one of the best digital apps that allows you to create eye-catching videos as um, my earlier speaker very powerful speaker professor Kupusami was telling that uh, about um, creating videos how you create videos how you create audios so here animoto is another important tool um, or um, um, apps which you can use to create videos and can uh, send to your students and uh, that would be really hopeful. It says that video you are seeing is much better, uh, much better than uh, um, much better than using the uh, um, uh, recorded things. So video is very important, and uh, that can be this animoto will help you uh, for showing the videos, right? Then comes Educreations, that is another important thing. Educreation is an interactive online whiteboard that is friendly to operate 
using this app you can create appealing videos for the subject content and share them instantly with the student so it is something uh, something like any motor only here also you can create videos and um, show them to the students uh, you know instantly because when you are taking the class that time itself you can create this video and uh, show them to your students that is uh, that is a that is the technique so what i mean to say with all this um, showing all this platform that these platforms are important for e course for e learning hello uh, someone has unmuted uh, him or herself sorry sir someone has unmuted herself or his, himself i am just checking oh. okay okay that will be fine so uh, these things um, these platforms are really important for our uh, our e learning since we are in indian scenario as i said to you already we are not in china neither we are in uk nor we are in usa in india we are not ready about e learning for our students so once the pan pandemic comes we had to learn we had to know we had to plan and we have to implement and you have to execute all these um, uh, technologies for the students which is not easy really reaching out to thousands of thousands of students i still remember i was talking um, uh, in another um, uh, webinar like this immediately after webinar with uh, immediately after this am fun and i was i was telling them how can we think even e learning when the students do not have a roof on their head uh, you know they are they are almost on the water under the water some students so that is the scenario of indian uh, indian economic scenario so we need to think about the economic scenario also indian economic scenario before thinking about all these e platforms that i will come maybe in our surely come my next slides will show you where we are so um but again uh, we have used um, if not all some of these uh, platforms apps for the students especially google classroom uh, zoom um, these all are used uh, in our in the in, in india for e learning for e resources but um, all these um, apps are important and i think gradually indian students also will learn uh, these apps and platforms so that they are also ready for uh, for anything any situation to fight any situation like covid in future so here only 15 i am showing you there may be lot more so um, these all platforms i personally used in my uh, in my career throughout my career in different um, conferences seminars or trainings or whatever so i wanted to share these um platforms with you but again i will say that none of them are very uh, uh, hard to not learn, to uh, learn you can of course try and can learn and can enrich yourself with this uh, new technology <clears throat> now as i said many times that i will be talking about the infrastructure not only the apps and tools we need to know where we are what is the ground reality that is really important i am sure some of you are there um, in this class also who will be 100% with me when i will go further with my uh, presentation that where we are and what we can do to uh, to come out from this situation and really can make it um, really can make it practical for the students uh, in indian scenario uh, so that uh, e learning is equally uh, taken by the students as classroom learning so other tools are what electricity do you even think that electricity is important for e learning computers ipad iphone android mobile phone 
or whatever, this kind of things. Computers could be, uh, you know, laptop or uh, desktop, whatever, iPad, um, Android, mobile. These, is, these are the tools really we need, we need to have. Then high speed uninterrupted internet facility. Not only high speed internet facility. It has to be a high speed uh, uninterrupted internet facility. So these are also important. We have we have we have seen the apps that that, that is important to go to the uh, students. That is the priority. Without that, we cannot think um, of um, doing e classes or e, or e learning. But at the same time, we need to think about electricity. We need to think about computer, laptop, or or or, or whatever uh, desktop, iPad, iPhone, Android, mobile phone, high speed internet connectivity, all this. So these are another tools that we need to think before we think about our developing our e-resources, e-learning. Uh, though we are we are in e-learning for last one year, but the, if you see the practical scenario, uh, it is not that, um, that happy scenario. It is not that happy scenario. So why are we are now? See, if we see Indian higher education scenario, in India, has one of the largest higher education systems in the world. Largest higher education system, right? We have 993 universities. Can you imagine? 993 universities. We have 51,649 higher educational institutions. 51,649 higher educational institutions. 3.7 crore students of the age group of 18 to 23. That is that means college and university level. So this is the small, uh, you know, statistics about Indian higher education system in 2020. Not far, it was not uh, not a past something last year scenario where we we use, we had 993 universities, 51,649 higher education institutions, 3.77 pro uh, students whose age group is 18 to 23. So this is, when we need to consider this before we go further. That's what I wanted to show you. We need to have electricity, we need to have computers, we need to have, uh, you know, broadband connectivity, we need to have um, other, other important, other things that is apps and other things. Uh, considering this number of universities, this number of students, this number of higher educational institutions, where we want to reach, where we are planning to reach through e-resources, right? Now, if we see the condition of electricity, where we are, a nationwide survey conducted by Mission Antodaya in 2017 and 18, it says, 16% of Indian households receive one to eight hours of electricity daily, right? Only 16%. 16% of Indian household received one to eight hours of electricity. 33% received nine to 12 hours of electricity. 47% received more than 12 hours a day. While in the US, this percentage is 100. 100% household gets 24 hours electricity, right? So this is the scenario in India. If you do not have electricity in your home for more than eight hours, how can you think having e-resources, e-learning in your place? First of all, you need to charge your mobile, you need to charge your you know, computer or whatever. The, the equipments you have to use for your e-resources. So, for example, your uh, your instructor told you that I'll be taking class at seven o'clock in the evening. When you you started thinking about the class, there is no electricity. How can you use the e-resource e-class? E, uh, e so that's what electricity connection of electricity is one of the most important things when you are thinking about your e-learning. So in Indian scenario, I am I am showing you the ground reality, where we are now. So if 
uh, we get only eight hours or less electricity or 12 hours or less electricity, then how can you think about the resources? That needs to be uh, taken into account. Next comes computer facility, right? We need to have a computer, at least a, you know, a phone, Android phone, smartphone, that is important. Without this, we cannot even think having um, uh, having e-learning. E in the year 2019, only 11% of Indian households used to possess any type of computer as against 74% in the USA. So where we are? 2019, 11% Indian household had computers against 74% in the US household. Next, while 66% of India's population lives in villages, 66%. Mind you, again, the figure, 66% Indian population lives in villages. Only a little over 15% of rural households have access to internet services. 15% rural households have access to internet services. But here the question comes again. You know, sometimes you will see the percentage um, much higher than 15% internet connectivity because that connectivity is not internet it is in, in in you know mobile data that is the mobile data so if you consider mobile data then it is more right but if you if you consider only internet connection wi-fi connection in your house then only 15 percent of rural household have uh, internet facility in their home now mobile data uh, there are uh, uh, Android mobiles in villages also, but these mobiles are mainly used for, uh, you know, um, other purposes, say for recreational purposes, not for educational purposes. Mobiles are there in, you know, all of, in you know, each and every one's hand now. Android mobiles, you will see. I think I was seeing uh, some calculation. Somewhere it is showing 50% of Indians having um android mobile somewhere it is saying 77 percent of indians are having android mobile so in between if you if you say 17 77 and 50 uh so 130 all about so 65 percent at least if you take an average 65 percent indians have uh, may have i should say android mobile phones but not that doesn't mean it is internet facility so 15 percent population uh, those who are living in uh, villages, they have internet. For urban households, the proportion is 42%. Right? So 42% urban household, we have Wi-Fi facility in our in our home. Only 8% of all households with members aged between 5 and 24 have both a computer and an internet connection. Only 8%. So this is the scenario. Only 8% of all households with members aged between 24, 5 to 24 have computer and internet connection. You may have a computer in a home, but not internet connection. You may have internet connection, but not computer. This way it is. But uh, this figure is to, uh, in 2019. All of our Indian figures, only 8% households have computers as well as internet. So if you want to teach e-learning, e-resources, uh, you know, if you want to go for e-learning, you need to have these facilities. There is there is no second question that we do not have computer, we do not have Android phone, we do not have, um, you know, uh, what is called a smartphone, we do not have a computer, we do not have electricity, and we are thinking about e-resources. That is not possible. So that is what I wanted to show you these figures that in a country, where we have more than 51,000 higher educational institutions, where we have crores of crores of students, where we have 993 or about 1,000 uh, universities. There, when we are thinking to go for electronic teaching, e-learning, we need to have the infrastructure. We are not ready for uh, teaching our students uh, having uh, this scenario, Indian scenario, where 
even electricity is not available all the times to our students where computers and um, uh, you know you know e, um, uh, what is that um, internet facility is not available to our students only for eight percent are having this facility so this we need to think before we are thinking about all these apps or all these platforms or kahoot or zoom or google classroom or whatever so that is what i wanted to show you this um screen then comes gender gap you all know that is all over india how much we are affected with this gender gap as per the internet and mobile Association of India in 2019, it is not a historical data, it is just recent. The data is taken from a very recent uh, year. 66% men had access to internet. As I told you already, that here internet doesn't mean that your Wi Fi can, it could be your mobile data that is taken care. So 66% men had access to internet as against 33% of women. This is the figure. 2019, 67 and 33. When it goes to rural India, this figure is more poor. There it is 72 and 28. 72% of men of a village have internet facility. While only 28% of women had that facility. So this is the gender gap we see in Indian society still. So economically, uh, gender-wise, um, we are not still in a position that um, we can say 100% or even 50% we can go for um, e-learning sources. But e-learning, uh, we started, we are hopeful that we'll be, we'll be, um, uh, we'll be successful. Uh, there will be a time when uh, all of us are ready with e-resources. But now, this is the scenario. Gap of economic condition. What it says, among the poorest 20% households, there are those who are poorest, 20% of those households, only 2.7% have access to a computer and 8.9% to internet facility. There also, if you can see, the internet facility is high. And, you know, connection of internet or accessibility of internet is high. 8.9 percent while the computer is 2.7 percent again it is the mobile phone so it is the condition of poorest in case of the top 20 percent households the proportion is uh, that is uh, 27.6 and 50.5 percent so lowest 20 percent only 2.7% of access to computer. Now you tell me, when you are thinking about imparting education through e-modes, and if only 20.7% have access to computer, what is the solution? Where does the another 97% go? How can we take them in our board to teach them e-resources? For example, in our university, where I am now working, West Bengal State University, majority, a large number of students, they come from marginalized families. Having internet facility, Wi-Fi facility for them may be a dream. So we need to think about their uh, to to take these students also to the net and teach them equally without any gap. So that we need to think and we should uh, 
we should design our module or you know courses in such a way so that these 93 percent of students 93 percent it is not 9.3 percent it is 93 percent i should say more than 93 percent 93.3 percent students will not have access if they are uh, they are among these 20 percent households right so even those who are in top uh, 20 percent uh, of the top 20 percent they are also uh, the computer they have 26 27.6 and internet they have 50 so 27.6 okay internet if they have 50.5 so that we can count that they have a mobile at least so if they have mobile and 50 50.5 percent have the connectivity uh, that is um, mobile data so this 50.5 percent about uh, among this 50.5 percent not necessarily these all are students there may be students there may not be students they are uh, doing something else so even if you take 50.5 percent also so where the other 50 percent goes how can we connect them that is really a big concern for all of us we are the library we the library we have to think that how to take all the students on the board there we have to play a big role really to think and do something for these students so that they are not left out this gap somehow we have to fill up the gap of gender gap of economic conditions these are really really big gaps uh, for e e learning e teaching uh, whatever we name it so as i was telling from the beginning though i will be talking about e resources though i will be talking about apps though i will be talking about uh, these um, uh, higher end technologies but really are we in a position to uh, to um, nurture this thing i had the opportunity maybe uh, my luck i i learned all this due to my when i was in profession so it is not necessary it is not uh, really um, uh, possible that our students also have the same opportunity seeing this scenario if only uh, 2.7 percent have access in computer then where the other goes this kind of questions comes right okay with all this i do not know what is the solution really i do not know what is the solution we we, we can just show this that where we are now and what are the facilities how can we use these facilities where the gap is that is our role we librarians we can show the role show this um, thing to um, authority maybe but um, uh, at the same time maybe we, the time has come when we 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 have to play a role to uh, bridge this gap so that as i always say i will be saying again so that there is we can bridge the gap we can bridge the gap that the students, those who are in rural background, they do not have computers, not have electricity, not have you know hi fi, uh, Wi Fi, whatever, they are deprived. And another group with having all these facilities, they are coming out, they are coming uh, up oh, with this facility. So we have to play some role. Maybe uh, I am not sure how we play, but something we have to do. Uh, maybe we, have, we need to talk to our uh, authority, our respective colleges, universities, and see how can we help this group, those who do not have this facility, and maybe they have they have merits, but not the money. So, e-resource, electronic learning um, is not reaching to this group of students, and and again i would say that um, that they should also be there on the run and we need to do something for them now what makes a successful online online learn online learn what is that what makes a successful uh, uh, thing so first thing is persistence persistence is perhaps the biggest key to success in online learning students who succeed 
are those who are willing to tolerate technical problems, seek help when needed, work daily on every class and persist through challenges. So there could be technical problems, there will be challenges, but those students who are really persistent take classes seriously, they will be successful in e-learning. Maybe, you know, we do our conferences, seminars, webinars through uh, e-learning now. All of a sudden, you see that we cannot see the voice. We cannot uh, listen to the voice. We cannot see the uh, participant, not the speaker. And we have to say all, all the times, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? All these things. So that, that problem is always there. That problem is always there. So those who are uh, taking that challenge, they are the right people for e-learning. Effective time management skills. That is everywhere. That is everywhere. Not only in e-learning. It is everywhere. If you are a time time manager, if you can manage your time effectively, that you are a successful person uh, everywhere, not only in e-learning sources. Effective and appropriate communication skills. That is really very important. Really very important. When it is in a traditional mode, maybe you are close to your teacher or the students are close to you. But when it is e-resource, e-learning, then it is different. There, you need to be a very, uh, your, your sharp communicator. Your body language, your voice, your tone should be very sharp so that it goes to the students and they get engaged in your lecture or whatever your session. You should be creative. You should be talking in such a way that they, they feel really to listen, uh, listen you. They get engaged to your uh, way of talking or presentation skills. So communication is very important in, in um, e-resources, e-learning. Again, I will tell, it is not only e-learning, it is everywhere communication skills is important. Technic, basic technical skills. You might have seen, I'm sure all of you might have seen, when we start um, these um, classes or webinar, uh, I cannot, uh, the, the people feel scared that I, uh, whether I can um, connect it properly, whether um, uh, my earphone will be uh, really uh, working, whether I can share my presentation, whether uh, my computer will work, all these uh, things are there. So you should have a basic minimum technical skills to learn or to make people learn uh, both ways, it is important. Reading and writing skills <coughs> is important. You should know how to read properly, write properly. Motivation and indi uh, independence, that is important. If you cannot motivate your students, your learners, your participants, then People will not be happy. They will be sleeping in your class. They will. Uh, they have to follow the class if it is mandatory. So they will switch on and they will sleep. But if you can talk properly, if your voice are you know strong enough to to make them keep them away, then it is important to so motivate <clears throat> motivate your students or participants. That is important. A good study environment. When you are taking a class or when you are learning through the resources both ways, it should be a place which is quiet. You, know? you sit there quiet and can learn in a quiet space, a good you know, study environment where no one disturbs you or uh, you know, uh, there is no much sound, no much hanging. So all these things we need to take care while taking or taking a class or a student when learning from the learner. So these are the important things uh, uh, if you want to become a successful online learner. Now, the, the here ends my presentation. Uh, I was asked to um, talk about uh, tools and apps. I, of course, uh, told you about um, tools and apps. These are the important apps. I have um, I have given you a long list of 15 apps or, or platforms. All of those you can try. Some are uh, open source, some may not. Um, but majority of them are open source, you can see. Uh, 
Mentimeter, uh, I will say, must, certainly you should see crazy. You must see. Um, uh, you must try. And uh, Google Classroom, we have tried. Kahoot, you can try. They are very, uh, you know, uh, interesting one. Crazy and Admodo. A, these four five tools you can always try and uh, see what is there. I am always there if you have a, if you have a problem, a question, you can always ask me. My number with, with uh, you know with my brother um, Jadip, you can ask him. But again, I will tell you, uh, we need to think. Those who are library professionals here may not be all. I have seen some people are from computer background, some people are physical science background. But all of us, it is not all library, but all of us. Our duty to see, uh, we are almost um, close to come out from this problem. I do not know, maybe some more time will take. But I, as I said, I hope, I wish, I pray that it doesn't come again in our lifetime. But if it comes again, uh, we need to be prepared. And I have shown you the scenario, Indian scenario, where we are now, electricity, computer, internet facility, uh, where we are now. The gap of gender gap, the, the economic gap, all these things are there. But with with all these things, we know that that will be there. It will not be uh, shorted out uh, there. Okay. These shortcomings, we have to take all our students together, and if necessary. Uh, whenever necessary, we have to teach them um, the resources or we have to keep them aware about their um, classes, about their course, about their lesson plans through e-resources. And we librarians, it is our promise, it is our commitment that we will help you throughout as long as uh, you are uh, taking classes. So. Those who are not library professionals here listening my my talk, I will I, I want to assure you from the uh, from my fraternity that we will be always there with you to provide you all sorts of resources for teaching our students those who really want assistance during this time of crisis. With these few words, I want to um, end my talk. I am really thankful to the college. I plan to visit this college once, maybe, I don't know, near future. Thank you, Joyri, once again. You are a dynamic man, I know. And thank you for organizing such a wonderful conference. Thank you all. Thank you for your patience sharing. Thank you all. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. <laughs> it is a you and Professor Kupushami has enlightened us well. And from our fraternity, I would like to thank you again. You have portrayed the, uh, what we uh, can do uh, in this uh, worst time. And at the same time, I wish that uh, everybody should have their bread, butter, and then the electricity and the internet facility. Uh, with this, with thanks to all of you, uh, we just want to suspend the first session here. And now it is 2.27. Uh, we will go for a 30 minutes break and hopefully we'll join by 3 p.m. with technical session three. And uh, another one thing that uh, two feedback links have been shared in the chat box. Please go through it. It is essential to know your views about the organization, about the talks you have heard today. With it, thank you, sir. And thank you all. Goodbye.